Shalom, Mabuhai, and blessings to you all. Okay, do you need to forgive God? The answer is probably yes, if you understand what forgiveness is. How's that for a quick payoff, huh? First seven seconds. Now I'm going to expand on all of that, but first I have some important shout-outs to make. The first is to one of my latest subscribers, Melody Moto Vlog. I thank her for subscribing, and I also thank her team, Angel, Wayne, and Shania. They emailed everyone in their respective Bible studies and encouraged them to subscribe to this channel. As a result, we are now at over 70 subscribers. That may not seem like much, but that is nearly double what it was from a week ago. 70% of my goal of 100 subscribers that will allow me to get a customized URL, which will definitely help with marketing. So Melody, Angel, Wayne, Shania, and all of their friends, maraming salamat para the support. Okay, back to forgiving God. I first came across this concept uh, while reading a book by Joel Osteen. Wait, uh, I, I, wait don't, don't turn this off. Don't turn this off. I need the metrics. So please, keep watching. Just hear me out, okay? Osteen was talking about forgiving God in his book, and he said, uh, you know, you may need to forgive family members, you need to forgive co-workers, you need to forgive other people who may have hurt you. And yes, you may even need to forgive God in order to move forward with your life. Now, at the time, that did not make any sense to me at all. And I came up with the same questions that you probably come up with. Does that mean that God does wrong? Does that mean that God commits sins? No, of course not. So I just put it in the back of my mind and I ignored it. I figured Osteen just doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, at this point, I should say that this was at a time when I was much less spiritually mature than I am now. Not that I'm spiritually mature now at all, but I was in even worse shape back then. Uh, but the concept of forgiving God never really left my mind. It just kind of took a back seat. Well, years later, when I was more spiritually mature... A good friend and a dear brother in Christ was delivering a message about forgiveness, and he talked about forgiving God. And I thought, all right, if he's going to talk about it, maybe this concept isn't so crazy. So I'll listen to what he has to say. This brother in Christ said that even though God does not do anything wrong, even though God does not sin, the pain that you are holding on to, that God allowed into your life, that is nonetheless very real. The resentment that you're holding against God because of something he did or something that he allowed, that is nonetheless real. To forgive is to release. And it is that real pain, that real resentment that you are holding against God that you need to release to him. You see, as human beings, we tend to form patterns in our mind. It's kind of a shorthand, a template, a meme, if you will, for understanding our world. It's a way to simplify reality so that our minds can sort of kind of understand it. And while that skill can come in handy, it can easily be misused. We tend to oversimplify and we tend to distort things. We tend to make connections in our mind where one might not exist. Have you ever heard the phrase, correlation does not always mean causation? Let me give you an example of that. Ice cream sales go up in the hot season. Crime also goes up in the hot season. So what can we conclude from this? If you want to lower crime, stop selling ice cream. Now that is a joke only. But you can see the point that I'm making. Sales of ice cream and the crime rate are two separate things. And similarly, forgiveness 
and offense are two different things. They're strongly connected, but it's not always one-to-one. -one. For example, when a parent disciplines their child in a godly way, is the child still going to be hurt and resentful that they were disciplined? Yeah, they are. Does this mean that the parent sinned by disciplining the child? No. But it is still in that child's best interest to release that hurt and that pain to God and to do it sooner rather than later. How about when someone will overspeed and the police pull them over and they get a ticket that they have to pay? Will the speeding driver be angry with the police? Sure. Did the officer sin by giving the speeding driver a ticket? No. The police officer was doing his job. He did not do anything wrong. But even though the police did nothing wrong, the anger and the resentment that that driver has is still very real, and they need to release it to God. Otherwise, that resentment is going to grow like a cancer and damage their spirit and eventually damage their physical health. All right, so what does any of this have to do with God? Does God discipline his children? Yes. Does God sometimes test us? Yes. Does God allow things into our lives that are painful? Yes. Does God sin? No. Do you have pain and anger and resentment against God? Well, only you can answer that question, but for most of us, the answer is yes, at least sometimes. And that pain is real. And that resentment is real. Forgiveness means to release. And in this case, taking that resentment that you have against God, whether he deserves it or not, is irrelevant. And releasing that resentment to God. And you are releasing yourself. You are freeing yourself to move on with your life with a repaired relationship and a closer walk with God. Because you've released this barrier, you've released this obstacle, this pain and resentment that you're holding on to for him to deal with. Now, I know this video was longer than usual, but hey, I need the watch hours. I mean, I'm not doing this for my health. I certainly hope you got something out of it. I want to thank you all again for watching. And remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks again, and God bless you all.